So, Mike, how'd you become an astronaut? Uh, I, uh, I dreamt about being an astronaut. I was a little boy and watching Neil Armstrong and Buzz walk okay. on the moon when I was six. Uh, but uh, unlike Chris, I kind of forgot about that dream until I got older. And once I got out of college, uh, I, uh, I decided that's what I wanted to try to do. Went to graduate school, got my PhD, and started applying while I was in grad school. So you'd be as a mission specialist, which is Correct. what they call the academic Right, branch. so Chris, Chris went so, you know, so, the, the pilot route. So he's the right stuff. Yes. He's like Hal Jordan. And then what are you? The wrong stuff, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> you set me up, what else no, would I say? <laughs> He's fighter pilot. He is. We he's learned cool about the fighter, fighter pilot. He's got a really cool mustache, too. Yeah, he's yeah, got to work that, that, that mustache. mustache is a clearly a disguise. It is a really cool. <laughs> no, it's real. I've tugged on it. It's No, it's a real mustache. He's Canadian. Let's find a little bit more about Chris's background. Yeah. Because he's into seriously dangerous stuff. Correct. Let's he was a test out. pilot. Yep. As a test pilot, I had we had one friend die a year for like 10 years. Ooh. And qualified people because that was a dangerous profession and we did it every day. Fly in space once every six or seven years, so at least the frequency of risk is lower. But when we look back now to what the risk was on my first shuttle launch, the risk of death during ascent was about one in 38. We thought it was a lot better than that. But now learning everything we knew, it was an extremely risky thing to do. But you just, you go, okay, this is going to be risky, but it's worth it. Now my job is to not die doing this. How could we spend the next three years learning so much about this that no matter what happens, we have a plan and we're going to react so that we improve our odds of surviving. And I take it that since you are here with me now, you didn't die in any No, I came close a couple times, um, but... You had uh, to parachute a few times? I've never had to jump out. Um, I've come close. I, I hit a, I was doing a test at Patuxent River, Maryland, just uh, over the Chesapeake, and we were calibrating this version of an F-18. It's 50 feet above the water, going 550 knots, and hit a seagull. Um, and if, if he'd been a, an inch or two over, he would have come through the windscreen and killed us both. But he just went down the left side, did a bunch of damage to the airplane. But, you know, a couple of close calls like that. So I've been both. A really seagull careful, at, really at 550 like, miles an hour. Yeah, it's a cannonball at that point. Yeah, and it yeah. didn't do the seagull any good, but uh, the airplane and I survived. Why? So that's not even a fault of the airplane. I mean, when I think of the oh, risk that no. fire pilots take, I'm not thinking they might fly into a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's a real risk. Uh, and, you know, some of the riskiest things I did in spaceships uh, are the random ones also. You know, the the peppering of, of debris from natural and man-made from space, that's something you just can't do anything about, but it's a definite, measurable, perceptible risk.